What up? It's been a little while. Uh, man, we've been jamming along in this place. Uh, just doing a lot of my stuff, doing stuff for customers, fine-tuning everything. A uh, couple, couple changes since the last video. We took a little, a little break from doing videos, but yeah, whatever. You need a little break sometime. I was putting out like a million videos a week, so whatever. So yeah, I'll go over some changes. Uh, I mean, the booth is pretty much how we left it. Um, did some lighting. I uh, had another LED. We got 360 degrees of lighting. Uh, I mean, it really, really helps with with doing um, the parts in there. So, um, you know, we got my little piece of paper for testing our fan. Uh, right here hanging, we have some aluminum. These are my Yamaha upper engine mounts. So, dude, I sandblasted these and I gassed them out. And I love the color of it. It's kind of like a... Um, Kind of like a like a white aluminum raw look but you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna clear the coat them and i'm gonna leave them because it's cool it's different so i love the way that thing looks it looks really badass don't mind my red face and nose i'm kind of under the weather here um see so yeah, a couple changes uh got some you know flooring down in the booth it's just some regular you know those puzzle mats uh, that actually has carpet on there Floor was getting all sticky from overspray, so we kind of just threw some mats down that I acquired. Um, got this nice little, uh, it's like surgical table from the doctors or whatever. It's cool because it, uh, my neighbor Daryl hooked me up with this. Shout out to Daryl, thank you. Uh, this thing raises and lowers. It's got wheels on it. It's pretty, uh, pretty strong. So we got, you know, so we do all the mixing and everything. It's right by the booth. Um, look at this. I already damn broke my my uh graduated cylinder i already broke it it's been like two weeks i've had it for <laughs> um so yeah i mean that's pretty much all that's changed we've uh changed the light moved the light from over in the corner and put it up right there so it's more efficient in the middle um got a poster hanging uh you've seen the box put some uh old school uh Boeries, I call them Bowries. Bowrie, it just sounds better. Bowrie, I like that way better. So those things are classic, man. Look at those things. I think, I think they're awesome. So, got the old school colors. How could you not hang those things up? I think they're badass. Um, it's about that. All that's changed in the lower part. Um, the upper part, sandblast cabinets, basically same. All the modifications are done. Got the. Uh, metering valve that's complete uh, did some extra lighting so you can um, see in that bad boy pretty good my next replacement is going to be uh, gloves because these gloves are already starting to get little tears in them um, so I'm yeah, not happy with that I mean I've only had this thing for three weeks so that's kind of I mean we've been using it a lot just because I'm, uh, I'm addicted to doing this stuff it's pretty cool so yeah, I mean, that's really, nothing's really changed up here. We got another table, um, just added the light over here, just so they could, this is like the degreasing table. Got our pail of simple green, we got our uh, paint can of acetone. We usually dump it in a tray. I'm in the process of getting a, uh, I'm gonna get a big slop sink so I can do bigger parts, soak them in acetone. Um, so yeah, nothing's really changed up here too much. Uh, Look at this thing. <laughs> I just finished this last night. And this thing came out good, man. It came out good. It's for uh that's for my Yamaha. I'm I'm in love with it. I posted that thing and it blew up, man. People loved it. So I mean nothing's really changed up here too much. Um we just been jamming along. Uh like I said, I haven't done a video in a long time, so figured oh i got this new vacuum check this little guy out this thing rips dude it rips like better than the big shot back i had, had out here that I had sitting on the ground and this thing mounts on the freaking wall not only that you just lift it up it pops right out carry it around do all your vacuuming we have that you know hooked up um that's going into our homemade you know dust cyclone so that's pretty cool that thing's working like a champ which is going into the back of the cabinet. 
I mean, I think this thing's creating suction. When I pop this bad boy on, if I put my hand over this hole, the whole cabinet starts to suck in. So you know it's working. So uh, like I said, it's been a while since we've uh, been on the tube. Um, today I'm actually going to do, you know, walk you through the process of what I do with two, uh, two engine mounts. Two little, um, I think these are the, uh, the front engine mounts. So we're going to uh, do these bad boys, show you the degreasing process. Obviously, you know, the gas out and all that, I'm not going to show that because, you know, that takes time. You know, but we'll, we'll walk you through it. Um, so we're going to get started with that. And uh, we'll be back in a second. All right, so we got these uh, two border mounts. Um, pretty beat up. Uh, not all that bad, but I figured uh, we'll do them a uh, nice fancy color. I showed you those other aluminum ones. Those ones are going to stay uh, that, you know, once we gassed them out, it turned like this bright white aluminum. And it looks really cool, so I'm just going to clear them. These ones, I think we're going to do black. Uh, I was tossed up thinking maybe burnt bronze, but eh, we'll do black. Black will be a lot cooler. Um, so first things first, what I like to do is um, I usually try to clean my parts a little bit in the house or down in the moto shop before I even put them in this simple green. Just to keep your simple green and my acetone as clean as possible. It just it's you get to you don't have to change it out as much, and for me it's just more efficient. It just makes more sense. So. You know, I'll put them in here, soak them in there for, you know, uh, you know, a couple minutes. Not that, um, you know, they're super dirty. So these things really don't have to soak, but other things I'll soak for a little while and, uh, you know, probably, I would say 20, 20 minutes and then, you know, scrub them down, rinse them off. I got, I bring water back here and then we'll throw them in the acetone for half an hour. But, you know, with these right here, these aren't, like I said, that bad. So what I'm going to do... Just throw them my little strand here, we'll do one at a time. I've got a couple uh, different brushes. I got the uh, parts washer brush. I also have like a little you know toilet style brush and a couple of two uh, toothbrushes just to get in the tight areas. I like to use this one just because it uh, it's nice and scrub, scrubby dubby. So dip that in there. Yeah. Really give it a good scrub, you know, dip it in there a couple times. Really give it a good scrub down, flip it over. I like to just get them as clean as possible before they go on the acetone. I feel like I'm on like a cooking channel right now. I don't know why. I feel like I'm like brewing up some steak or something. <laughs> yeah, so this is when you put the ketchup on, a little bit of pepper. So I like to, like to scrub a little bit, you know, just get it as clean as possible. Dip it in. This is so, you know, I use this just so I don't have to, uh, you know, get my whole hands and get my gloves off. I mean, it's kind of cold. The stuff's been sitting out here all night. I came back here one night, it was frozen. So, you know, scrub it up. And do the same thing with this one. Dip it in there a little bit. Get the brush in there. Give her a good uh, scrubby dubby. Scrubby dubby! These things are already pretty clean, so. Uh, said it's not that big of a deal I like to make sure stuff's even clean before I even bring it back here so I'll do that I have a little parts washer I got from work down in the uh, moto shop so I'll hit it with that stuff first with some Dawn Dawn does wonders and it's you know not too uh, not too aggressive not too harsh so these are uh, you know, pretty clean already so so uh, what we'll do next is I like to always cap this off I got this thing for like four bucks. It's perfect. So, um, what I like to do is I'm gonna go rinse these off with some water. I'm not gonna film that because I mean, it's rinsing stuff off of water. Like, are you kidding? Yeah. So, I'm gonna film, uh, not film that. I'll rinse them off and then we'll be back. I'll show you. Um, I mean, it's not that exciting just putting it in a can, but we'll show it. We'll show it anyway. That's cool, right? Be right back. All right, so we uh, just rinse these bad boys off. Give them a quick drying, just to I like to dry before you go in the acetone, even though the acetone you know, won't hurt or anything, but I always dry it. Why not? So we 
give it a quick dry. This thing's got some like, I don't know if you probably can't, you can't really see it on there. Eh, maybe you can. Got some like weird zebra pattern going on. Like from the jungle or something. I don't know what's up with that. So those are dry. Um, I'm going to get my mask on. I'll pop these things in the acetone. I always wear a mask. Always wear gloves. Always wear a mask. Acetone is nasty, man. I mean, I learned my lesson. I, you know, even just messing around, opening this can for a couple minutes, you breathe it in and... Man, I mean, I feel woozy, dude. <laughs> so, I'm going to go get the mask on. We'll uh, open up the can, get these parts in there, and then um, we're going to let them soak for 30 minutes. Uh, it's the best thing to let them soak. Um, wiping down is just not efficient. There is some exceptions with some bigger parts. I, you know, talked to Cerakote on the, on the phone, and they have a really good tech, tech support, and... You know, uh, you can hit stuff with Bright Clean that doesn't leave a residue. You hit it really good with Bright Clean. Right now, I just don't have a good, big enough acetone tank. That's you know, what I'm working on doing is getting a big slop sink. That way, I can fit, you know, swing arms and subframes in there. And um, so, yeah, I mean, you can hit it with Bright Clean and then wipe it down really, really, really well. Um, and just uh, do the gas out. The gas out is really important, and that's how you tell if... Uh, the brake clean and everything did its uh, job. So we'll go get the mask, open this up, throw these in there, and um, then we're going to do uh, gas out after that, after 30 minutes. Or no, excuse me. I'm, I'm all backwards here. I'm like thinking, got my head up my butt. After acetone, we're going to sandblast. So, and then, and then gas out. I'm sitting here talking about gas out, getting all confused and stuff. So after the acetone, We'll do sandblasting, then gas it out. So we'll get the mask. We'll be right back. So we got this. Uh, we got the mask. We're gonna open this up. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to talk with the mask on. So we'll open it up, throw the parts in there. 30 minutes. Pull them out. Put them in the sandblaster. So it's been 30 minutes, we're going to pull these out, um, get them on this paper towel, let uh, all the acetone evaporate, then throw them in the blast cabinet and give them a nice little quick little blast. So usually I get them with the hook. In that case, I couldn't just because they were flat against the bottom. Uh, I don't really want to use a strainer or anything. I don't like putting anything else in the acetone because that's just more room for contaminants. So uh, I like to keep everything out. Um, the rubber gloves obviously are clean. I just put them on. Um, you do go through a lot of rubber gloves just because I don't like, once I dip them in the acetone like that, I do not like to, uh, to um, you know, reuse them. Um, I always put these in a bag with my paper towels, put them in a bag, close the bag up. I have a, uh, a hazard garbage can. Um, and then, you know, get rid of it according to your, you know, whatever state laws you're, you have. Um, dispose of it according to that. Um, every, every state's different probably. So just look into that before you just go throw it in your garbage can. Um, and so we're going to let these evaporate and throw them in the blaster. We'll film a little blasting, and then it's time for gas out. All right. 
So, we're going to get these in the paper towel here. After you acetone them, it's very important not to touch them with your hands. So, we've got a paper towel. And, uh, I mean, it's not as fragile as they say, but just do, I just like to do the right thing. So we're loading them into the cabinet. I like to use this piece of wood so it's not metal on metal. I've noticed that uh, if you lay the metal parts on the metal grate, some of this red powder coat comes off and it's just not, uh, I'm not down with it. So I put this in there just so we don't have to lay it right on the wood. Or I mean, excuse me, lay it right on the, uh, the metal. So we're gonna close this up, get this uh, compressor aired up. I should have done that already, but oh well. So we'll get the compressor aired up. We're gonna blast this out. Uh, Blast those two parts out pretty good, and then uh, in the oven for gas out. So we got the parts in the blast cabinet. Um, we're going to blast it with 120 grit aluminum oxide. I don't use the uh, the black stuff that you can get at like Home Depot and uh, Harbor Freight and all that stuff. I don't like using that. A lot of guys don't use it because it leaves a black residue. And... Um, after you sandblast, you're not supposed to hit it with the acetone again because you risk contaminating the parts. So well, that's where a lot of people make a mistake is they, they'll hit it with, um, you know, the brake cleaner acetone again and you just risk contamination. So um, I always wipe down my gloves um, every, every little while, but I mean, there's no oils or anything on those gloves. It's all sand anyway. So um, We'll go right to the acid right after the sandblasting we'll go right to the oven do uh do an hour gas out at 300 and then um let them cool down the room temperature and then we'll we'll hit them with the coating um so we're going to sandblast these um you're supposed to do 60 to 80 psi or 180 80 to 100 psi um with the metering valve you don't have to run that high of pressure it etches the surface and does just as good as a job at you know I'm doing like 40 to 60 psi um, it's just easier for my compressor to keep up right now um, even though my compressor the CFM's meet the requirements but it's it is you know I think 10 years old so it's just not picking up the way it should so we'll hit it with the sandblast I'll show a little bit of that it's gonna be noisy because my compressor is gonna be running um, we'll hit it with that, get a little etch. You don't have to overblast. It's not going to hurt anything if you overblast, but you're just wasting material. You're breaking down your media faster and media is expensive. So you just, it's all costs. You're running your compressor longer, you're breaking down your media quicker. So do a nice blast and then cut it out for sake.
right? So we, uh, that's all I really, I mean, these things are raw anyway. Um, and it's a rough surface, so I just etched them up a little bit more. Um, we're going to gas them out for an hour, 300 degrees. And then um, we'll do the coating. So uh, we'll go load them in the oven. Actually, I'm going to get it up, get it up to temperature, and then we'll go load it in the oven. Um, so we'll see you then. So we got the oven up to temperature a little bit. We're going to, obviously the door is open, so it's losing heat. But we're going to uh, close the door, like I said, an hour, 300 degrees. I like to leave it cracked a little bit. Um, this thing doesn't have a flue on it, so I'll leave it cracked. And by leaving the door cracked, that's how I uh, get it to maintain temperature. So we'll let this do our do a thing, do its thing. Ugh, I can't talk today. And then uh, we'll be back to get prepped for coating. All right. So it's been an hour. I've uh, got a couple other things in there as well um, that I'm going to coat. I'm going to do a couple things black and then a couple the other two aluminum mounts that I liked the way they looked after they were gassed out and sandblasted. I'm going to do those uh, with clear. So we'll probably do the clear first just so I don't put black in the gun and then have to, you know, put clear in the gun. So do that first, do clear first, and then we'll, uh, we'll do the black. So we're going to pull these out. This up and off, plug it. Look at that. Just don't leave me alone. So, got that. Let we'll that rack cool for a little while, cool room temperature. We're going to knock out uh, these two first in the clear. And then we'll come back and we're going to do all the front row in black. So, We'll be back. What's happening? We got our parts out. We got our we got them hanging. Uh, I like to put a hook on the bottom just because it gives you more control. Um, forgot to mention before. Um, do a little blow off. Uh, I blew them off before I put them in the oven. Um, and blow them off really good before you coat them. Uh, do high pressure. I'm doing like 140 psi right now just to get all that grit leftover grip off without having to wipe it with the paper towel which has little fibers and everything in it so um air is the best way so we're going to blow these off but then we're going to get them a good coat of clear gun all set up. Uh, we're going to be spraying the clear at uh, 30 psi instead of 20 to 25. So we got the gun all filled up with the clear. Um, you'll notice right off the bat this stuff's really strong compared to regular uh, Cerakote. Kind of smells like uh, the hardener that you put in this, uh, the regular you know colors and stuff. It has like an ammonia smell to it. Wear a respirator, get your booth on. I'm going to throw the fan on, it's going to be a little noisy, but um, this stuff's really harsh, so uh, I'm going to get my eye protection on, I'm going to get my mask on, we're going to uh, throw the booth on, and we're going to spray these two parts down. Got a uh, light coat of clear on it. It's actually my first time using the clear. It comes out pretty good. It's not a super high gloss, which is good. 
it is a high gloss, but it's not not nothing crazy. Um, I think that was a really cool idea that I did, where we just coated the bare, sandblasted, and gassed out aluminum. It has like that white factory look to it. Came out pretty damn good. So definitely happy with it. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna let this uh, let this dry for about an hour. I might put it in the other room just because it's pretty strong. I want to do some other coating, so uh, I want to get this all covered in black. So came out good. This one has a little black speck in it that I'm pissed off about, but whatever. It's a dirt bike. Trial and error. Overall, came out really good. So I'm pumped on it. pretty set up. Um, it's been about 45 minutes and it's nice and coated. Um, shiny but not too shiny. I didn't want it too shiny. I'm glad I, I did. I only did a you know a thin coat but I'm loving the way it looks with that uh, raw aluminum, raw sandblast aluminum. It's coated in clear. It's different and it looks, uh, looks really cool. So. It's, uh, I mean, I can already touch it and everything, so, so pretty cool. Um, we get ready to do some, uh, do some black on these other engine mounts that we just uh, prepped before. What's happening, guys? So, uh, it's actually the next day. I uh, just got too late the other day to do the black, so we're going to be putting, um, we actually added one more part that we're going to be doing the black on. Uh, got the graphite black here in the uh, H-Series, part number H-146. Um, we are going to be doing a 19 KTM 125SX uh, Clutch Master, or excuse me, no we already did that one. We're going to be doing the Front Brake Master. Um, The uh, sight glass has been welded and uh, is no more. So uh, they decided to do that after I coated it. <laughs> so they, uh, you know, being the nice person I am, I said, you know, bring it back. We'll get it covered. No problem at all. So we brought it back. We're going to coat that. We're also going to coat the uh, those other two uh, engine mounts. Here's that. Here's the uh, the Brembo front master, and then also the uh, those two front engine mounts from my YZ, and then the uh, front brake line. I don't know. We'll call them pinch clamps, whatever you want to call them. We're mixing this up. We're gonna be doing 18 to 1 ratio. Probably just mix up one batch of uh, 18 to 1. That should be fine. Should be plenty to cover these parts. Um, if we have to mix up some more, we'll mix up some more. No big deal. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna be spraying this at uh, probably about 23 psi. They recommend 20 to 25. We're gonna do about 23. So uh, let's, uh, let's mix this up. crappy rainy day out there making make a nice mess here Let's see man almost right on the money almost <laughs> actually you might be on the money I'll wait for these bubbles to pop. I always wait for the bubbles to pop. If you don't, you can just do uh, right to the bottom of the bubbles. Try to get them to pop. If you let them sit or maybe just, you know, wiggle them around a little bit, they will pop eventually. Just don't slosh it around too much in there because then you will lose your line. Um, and we're pretty much almost right there. 
So you might be a little tiny bit over. So we're going to dump a tad back here. As I like to say, a nuzzle. Dump a nuzzle. Shout out to Tad Uzzle. <laughs> I love you, man. Yeah, we're pretty good right there. Let me go get my mask here. Put the mask on. Just so it's ready. Uh, we're going to go a little drippy back in there. Just a, a little tiny bit over the line. Catalyst here. This stuff's harsh, so uh, I'm going to throw on the mask. I'm going to stop talking. We're going to be doing one milliliter of this, or one part, as you would say. And to do that, I have this little glass dropper. Makes it a lot easier, guys, instead of you know pouring it in, because if you pour too much in, you kind of just ruin your whole batch, unless you uh, double the batch, but you still kind of lose you know track of where you're at. So. These are one milliliter droppers, glass. I always like to use glass. Um, I bought a 20 pack, so I just dispose it every time I'm done using it. I don't reuse them. I uh, just make it easier, have a nice, fresh, clean one every time. And then we're right on the line, that's perfect. So we're gonna add one part of the catalyst, and then uh, we're gonna mix it up with the, uh, put the glove, stretch the glove over the top, mix it up. Um, I always do, it says at least 60 seconds. I always do a little bit more than that. Um, I've had one problem where I didn't, you know, mix it in well enough, and it will cause little surface blisters, um, which is actually little bubbles of uh, hardener coming out of your gun. So uh, we're going to put the mask on. We'll mix this up, and then uh, we'll get ready to spray. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, cap this off now remember once you mix this up guys you cannot put it back in the bottle um, once it's mixed I think it's two hours two hour uh, shelf life so get to spraying don't leave it in your gun don't do anything mix it up spray it you know just get it done don't leave it sitting around. So we're gonna mix this up. No need to show that on the camera. And we'll get the spray. We'll be right back. So we just got uh, finishing mixing this up. Um, one thing I forgot to talk about is ratios. Uh, I talked about what this ratio is 18 to 1. So they recommend 24 to 1 for a matte finish, 18 to 1 for a semi satin, and then uh, 12 to 1 for uh, a little bit of a gloss look not much uh, it's not a very high gloss product basically if you want gloss you know put a you know put Cerakote's high gloss clear on it which is uh, they do oven and air cure uh, I use the air cure just in case I want to add some gun candy or you know warlock custom pigments into it um, I tend to find at an 18 to 1 ratio you get less uh, it's less prone for little surface scratches, even though you know it won't scratch through. But you know, if you scratch your fingernail on it, 18 to 1, you're less prone to get that that surface scratch. So um, I stick with 18 to 1, and like I said, if you want high gloss, 
get some clear. Um, I'm in the meant to get some KG Gun Coat, which is a different product from a different company. They do uh, anodized colors and all that, so I'm going to be getting that and doing some experimenting with that, which is cool. So you can do hubs because they do like anodized replica colors, so that's perfect for hubs. Uh, they do green, black, blue, and then red in the anodizing uh, that I'll be using. So perfect for, you know, Cowie, Honda, Suzuki for black, and then like, um, you know, you can do the blue for the, um, or blue for the Yamaha, so. This is about done mixed up. We're gonna load it in the gun and uh, get the spray in. Just checking. Uh, got one solid coat on there. I'm just double checking. I always double check, uh, especially something like this. You got a lot of nooks and crannies. I always double check, triple check. Make sure I got full coverage of where I want. Actually, using a different gun today. Testing it out. Um, I like it. Our main gun is down at the moment. Meant to get that straightened out. This gun did uh, just as good as a job, if not actually better. It's actually a cheaper gun. So I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it sprayed nice and even. No blobs, no blobs. Nice even fan. You gotta take it out of the light and get some shadows on it just to really see, you know.
So we got that all taken care of. Everything's good. Um, as you saw, those little pieces were blowing around. I should have hooked them, but um, it's fine. It's for my own, you know. Not that I want to do, you know, not as good as a job of my own stuff, but um, they're, you know, fully coated, nice, even coat. Um, but small stuff like that to prevent it from blowing around like it did. You can, you know, hook it from the bottom like I did with the master cylinder and everything. Um, but you know, those little parts like that, uh, I'll probably be recording them anyway, you know, halfway through the season. It's right up on front with all the roots and everything, especially going to the expert class, who knows what they'll look like, so. I mean, I mean the stuff's super strong, don't get me wrong, very, very strong coating. Uh, probably stronger than powder coat, I think. It's just less susceptible to, you know, chipping off, it doesn't chip off to where powder coat, if you hit it with something, gonna chip that whole area off with Cerakote if you hit it it's just wherever the impact zone is you might have some damage um, but it's a very strong very strong coating so we got all those pieces in the oven just out here I'll show you before my battery dies so you always want to let them sit for um, you know five eight to ten minutes before you uh, throw them in the cooker and get them you know coated just to let all the solvents evaporate but I mean you can see it's a nice even finish um, so we're gonna put these in at uh, probably do 300 for an hour you can do 250 for two hours or 300 for an hour uh, I've done the 250 for two hours so I'm gonna try out the 300 for an hour today um, should be no problems. So we'll show you what they look like when we take them out. See you in a few guys. What's happening? So we just got done, done with cleanup. Um, I wasn't gonna show that, really no need for it. Um, I clean everything with acetone. Uh, just be real safe, wear your mask, make sure you're not buy anything that has an open flame or uh, I don't even like going by outlets or anything when I'm doing it, so. Um, I'll you know clean it up with paper towels and then um, 
clean my cup and my gun with paper towel, put some acetone in there, spray it through, and then I'll probably go pull the gun apart, clean the needle and uh, the head and everything. And then um, I'll put acetone in this, wipe down the outside, put acetone in this, put the glove over it, shake it around, do that like twice, and then I'll put a paper towel dipped in acetone down in it, twist it just to get all the residue out. So that's that, and then um, you know, clean up your work area and everything else. Um, and I'll show you a quick clip at the end when we pull everything out of the oven. Right now it's in there uh, at uh, 300 for an hour. So uh, we'll show that at the end and then that'll be uh, this. That'll be it for the video. It's a long video, guys. Um, really sit through and watch it. Um, you'll learn some cool stuff. Uh, I think it's worth it if you really want to know the uh, how I do You know my Cerakote. Um, there's a million ways I'm sure people do it. A lot of people don't do it the right way I use all the proper stuff and, um, and that's that you know, I'm taught by uh, one of the best uh, which is Big Oak Coatings down in North Carolina it's my brother um, he does it on guns but uh, he's one of the best in the business as far as I'm concerned and uh, everything I learned is from him so you know, you know but up here it's I do think just a couple of little things different I don't have all the proper stuff that he you know does as far as you know big soak tanks and everything but we do what we can do what we have and we do it the uh the right way as sarah Pope wants it to do it so um, i'll show you the stuff at the end i hope you guys enjoyed um i'm not going to really talk at the end i'll just show you what everything looks like um don't forget to like subscribe and share if you want let your buddies know uh, i mean you can get into it and get the starter kits it's really not that hard if you want to do your own stuff you're allowed to do your own guns you just cannot make money doing guns on Cerakote uh, Cerakote is considered uh, a form of gunsmithing so you're allowed to do your own guns you just cannot make money doing guns without an FFL so um, that's why I'm doing bar bike parts and uh, anything else but guns I uh, hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you later